were replanted I believe three years ago uh, there's a lot of good growth there uh, they all grow um, they grow as vines uh, and then you can see some of the some of the uprights here that they have uh, so there and the Cranberries are very, very water dependent. A lot of people think that cranberries grow in water. They don't. Um, cranberries are a wetland species. Uh, they have a very shallow root system, so they need a lot of water. We have to put on approximately an inch of water per week um, onto the vines. Obviously, we prefer to have rain, but if we don't, we have we have uh, sprinklers. Most of us have put in pop-up sprinklers now, uh, which are just the same as your lawn sprinkler except a little taller, uh, and they they basically, when, we'll go down here and I'll turn them on so you'll see what it, what it looks like, but it's, uh, they just come up, they're in, in lines, in, in rows, uh, and the, the uh, systems work very well. Uh, back when I first started, we had wires that went down to the bog to find out the uh, uh to to keep keep track of the temperature so we were actually you know when when our temperature monitor went off all of us got up and uh, went down and turned on our sprinklers and then we drove around all night to make sure that our sprinkler heads were still turning and that they weren't in fact either popping off or uh getting frozen so it was for if you had multiple nights in a row, it was very, very tedious. Uh, so within the past seven to eight years, seven to ten years, we've actually come up with uh, pop-ups, and they're all now computerized, so that when the, te when the temperature on the bog gets to a, a temperature which we have set, the computer automatically turns them on. So, and, and that, in theory, means that we don't have to get up and, and uh, check our bogs, but oh, there's still a lot of growers who will get up. Basically, it, it turns fast. The berries are not held on very, with a, a strong connection. So they, get, they hit the berries and they knock all the berries off. The berries have four air pockets in them, so they all float. Uh, and we, we actually used the wind, so we will probably be taking off down that far end today because the wind's going this way. So if the wind was going this way, we'd be taking off probably on, on this end. Uh, so once once the berries are all floating, the, the guys who are on the reels just take, take off. They go, go to the next box to, to work. The guys that came in to, to reel me my acre and a half, I had been in there last Tuesday morning at 8.30. At 9.20, they were packing up and going. Uh, and so... Th so it's a very fast process uh, and it's a very efficient process. Uh, my guys actually have, uh, I'm, so they actually have an arm on the outside that they can put down into the ditch so that the, the ditch most of the berries out of the ditch. Although they don't want to get too too low in, in the ditch because uh, the, the lowest the lowest berries in the ditch tend to be uh, on again off again wet 
and therefore you have much higher incidence of loss. So we, we basically will go around one, once that's done. I had my, my takeoff crew, or my picking crew was, was guys on their reels. My takeoff crew comes in with, with a big lift truck and they, they basically uh, we, put, we put on another inch to two inches of water if we can so it makes it easier to, to corral the berries. We, most, of, most of the growers go around with a leaf blower and blow all the, the berries away from the edges and then put a uh, The, the bog owners are re, re, basically rely on themselves to build their own contraptions. Uh, and I, I understand there's one contraption that Tick has that was uh, built as a uh, basically a welder and train. <laughs> so there were a number of spots where it wasn't quite as nice as, as it should be looking. So this is this is the suction box that. Uh, sits down on the bog and they, they anchor it to the bog and then they start start drink, pulling the water in um, and so you've got a big pump there's no moving parts inside there so it gets, gets all pulled up and then pushed that, that conveyor or that uh, <coughs> pipe into the, the, the hopper and that's where they, they have the, the water nozzle coming down on straight down on uh, and then on the other side there's there's a, a truck that's situated, uh, and that's accepting the berries. The, the berries come down uh, into the truck, and he hits the horn when he wants the truck driver to move five feet forward. So he evens out the load. Uh, but it, it's, it's all... Nelly uh, spent his entire last winter building a new one of these. And this has a lot less hydraulic parts. There's a lot more hyd hydraulics now uh, that, that are in use. Uh, and it's, it's basically, uh, you know, and, and you know, this, this truck doesn't level. They have to be washed and sorted, and this is the machine, it's called the sorting machine, and if you can visualize Lucy and Ethel at the candy machine, <laughs> okay? You know, you know them, I know you know them. The bad berries would get picked out and put in this box here, and the good ones are going to go down into the cardboard boxes. And these are the berries that you would buy in the supermarket, at a farmer's market, or anything like that. Um, these are the berries that you would use in baking. You would not use wet picked berries in baking. Unless you use craisins, you could make muffins with craisins. But anyway, um, so this type of machine is still in use. On a larger, I've seen seen them like three times as big, but it's still the same principle. And they, there used to be a picture here of I don't know why it was always the ladies, but they were all lined up either on an individual machine or a couple on this side and a couple on that side, and they'd be pulling out all the trash. Um, so, and some of it does go right down. As we mentioned outside, the berries have those compartments and they float, but that's also what makes them bounce. <laughs> and the bad stuff is going to bounce right down here and the good stuff is going to come right out here. So I'm just going to show you that real quick.
about the, the white ones. Okay, I do a lot of cooking with cranberries. I make whole berry cranberry sauce. If I'm lucky enough to get my berries right from a farm, the white ones have way more pectin than the red ones. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, what's pectin? Does anybody have any questions for me or Bob about anything you saw or heard today? Thank you.